Okay, so let's take a look at legs. They are pretty much the same as arms in many way, in so much as you have the girdle option, zeros, and you can add toes with so many phalanges per toe. You often don't need a hip girdle, you know, for something like a, um, a humanoid, you know, there's no equivalent to the collarbone in the hip that you can move and flex around. But for some creatures it might be desirable, hence the options there. The main differences in legs are the different anatomies that are available. Um, plantigrade, which is heel in contact with the ground, so this is a leg like a human. Digitigrade, which is toes in contact with the ground, so that's like dogs and cats and so on. And unguligrade, which is tip of the toe itself in contact with the ground. So that's things like horses, cows, sheep and goats and so on. Animals with hooves. In plantigrade and digitigrade animals you have the same number of joints present and really what they represent are kind of like just different control systems over what is pretty much otherwise the same hierarchy. Unguligrade are slightly different. Anyhow, let's just take a quick peek. We'll throw in a plantigrade limb here and we'll rig fit it and of course legs generate by default as IK. You will notice that for the pole in legs then the pole item is always by default the child of the actual main IK goal itself. Of course you can still change that should you want to just by reparenting it off. What you get in the plantigrade limb is you move your main foot IKG, the leg IKG around like this, and of course the foot bones, that being the actual foot bone itself and the toes bone, are children are fixed within that space, so they're locked in there. You then have the reverse foot null, which gives you lift from the ball point there, and of course does your other actions such as your flap for the walk actions, you can quickly key foot action during walk cycles got turn out from the heel point there. You can flap the toe using the pitch controller here. You can twist from the point of the ball there and you can also roll the foot side to side from the contact points of the side of the foot. All of these points are of course marked out in the little foot marker system here so you can mark out the side edges of the foot, the point of the tip toe, the point of the heel where the edges of the mesh are and of course the point of the football itself and of course the little box that helps you place the controller somewhere where you can get to it nice and easily. What you also get in the foot systems um, are these secondary controls here which are coloured dark red. Again you don't always need to use these most of the time in fact you do not um, and you'll see that this gives additional pivoting from these points here at the toe position, either twisting it round or of course spinning it there on its bank. Or alternatively, if you're posed backwards like this on the heel, then you've got the little secondary heel null that lets you tip around the edge of the heel point. Much of the time, you know, you won't want to use these an awful lot. They're just sort of there to provide for those situations or animators who want to be able to control every last little you know nuance of motion within the foot. You've also got the IK actual in feet which operates within the IK foot space like this um, and so when you move that around you can dodge the foot like this and this can be a nice easy way to get a little bit of subtle nuanced motion into a foot just by dodging that itself around within the IK space. You can also roll it side to side like this, which will give you rolling on the foot there as well. Do be aware, um, because this IK actual is actually operating within the IK goal space, it's not intended to be taken outside of that space. And there are a couple of consequences if you push it too far. Well, there's one main consequence if you push it too far. Um, if we look at the toe bone here, we will see, uh, there it is, you see the colour of the bone change when I come forward there? Yep, both of the toe and the foot there. That's because these are flipping, they are inverting, um, because we're going beyond 
too much the bounds of the IK foot space. Um, I have built in a contingency to allow for this, so if you do really need to push something over, obviously your geometry would flip. You can turn this back on pitch and that will fix the issue for you like that. So there is a little contingency allowed for that. However, you can pretty much go as far backwards as you want without producing a flip. It's purely because of the way that the foot targets itself into the IK goal system that you eventually get this if you come too far forwards. But as I say, you do have that contingency to get around it. So let's take a look at the digitigrade limb here. So we'll just add one of those guys as well. And I'm gonna just pull him backwards here out of the way. What we see is that we have the exact same number of joints, of bones, of controllers, whatever you want to call them here. Okay, we'll just rig fit it. Um, this would of course be the equivalent of the thigh, the lower leg, the foot, and then the toes item down here. This kind of limb going on, you know, majority of carnivore style quadrupeds, it's a three piece system. So all three bones respond to the IK. It's only this last toe item which is fixed within the IK goal system rotation itself. Otherwise, you'll notice that the foot here um, does more or less the same thing there. It raises at the ankle point, but of course it's creating press in all three bones and otherwise all other movements of the IK reverse foot here do exactly the same thing as they would on the plantar grade limb. And you have exactly the same secondary control points again um, with the fact that if you come too far forward you will, will wind up flipping that little item once again the same contingency exists you can roll this guy around as i say these really just represent two different ways of controlling the same anatomy um, because in the two different creatures humans and dogs we use our limbs slightly differently however there is no reason that you couldn't for instance uh, do a dog's limb out of a plantigrade limb like this by just setting it something of this nature or vice versa for doing a human limb out of a digitigrade one like this. All you would have is this different control method and so of course you would now have a dog leg here where the lower two bones were of course fixed within that space and you would get your press in three bone chain by lifting this guy. Um, and in this case, you would have a foot that became part of the IK system with the toes always being fixed to the IK rotation. The third one, unguli grade limbs are different because that actually has a different number of joints in it. That contains five total joints. We'll pass it over here. Um, and this is what you would get on horses and sheep and cows and all of those things. The additional joint is this one here, the fetlock. Essentially, this is the thigh bone. This is the lower leg bone. This here is the foot bone. This is the toe bone. And this is a second toe bone. The toe nail is effectively what an ungulate walks upon. Otherwise, this functions very much like the digitigrade limb in that you just have this last item here that is fixed into the orientation of the IK goal space. You get press in the limb by lifting and lowering this item here. And of course, you've got the forward back tipping for having it do contact like that. What you also have is the fetlock, which operates here on FK. So you can always turn like that. If you watch horses when they walk forwards, you'll notice that as their legs come off the ground, as the leg pushes backwards, taking a step forwards, they do this little flick with their hooves. And also when a foot comes down and lands on the ground, there's this little spring that tends to happen as the fetlock takes the weight. In a horse, there's a very strong tendon that reaches around the back here and it acts like a spring or a suspension to take the weight of the animal as it hits the deck, as its leg comes down and it bears its weight. It also, the reason you get that flick, most especially during a trot or a gallop, 
is because that tendon, as it comes down, it stretches and stores up energy. And then as the animal moves forward, it springs back again, propelling the animal forward. The reason this is FK is because it's a very precise clockwork little motion that you get. It's not well served by IK. And also, of course, trying to do four bone IK doesn't give you a very easy to handle result. You've always got to have an extra controller in there somewhere to be able to control the nuances of the leg. So effectively, for a four bone leg like this, you always need two controllers, one that creates one part of the press and one that helps reshape that press overall. So in this system, the fetlock joint itself is the secondary controller. This is the same whether you've got the leg in IK mode only, as we have here. Obviously in FK mode, you would always be animating this on FK. And when you're in IK, FK switching for the limb, this will still operate both in IK mode and FK mode.